Hi everyone, um, I decided to get on tonight and um, talk about a post that I made the other day. Um, I asked everybody um, what brought them to God and um, like maybe share some testimonies and stuff like that. And so I decided to get on and share a little bit of like my story, but I'm not going to probably complete the whole story tonight just because it's very long. But all in all, like, I wanted to share a little bit about what brought me back to God. And the beginning of it was that, like, I grew up in a church. And I grew up in a church called Knox Church. And it's in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And, well, it was, I should say, because they closed it down, um, I think, in the early 2000s or something like that. And now it's a daycare. Um, but I was baptized there. Um, my brothers and sisters were baptized there. My mom and dad got married there. I got married there. Um, my first marriage. Um, and uh, I, a lot of other of my friends and family got married there. Uh, and, you know, we, we went to church, of course, and listened to sermons and sang um, hymns and stuff. And also there was Bible school for um, little kids, and I attended Bible school. So anyways, after growing up in church and everything like that, um, I, it, you know, of course, um, made me a believer of Jesus, and I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. But then when I got a little bit older, of course, you know, as a teenager, I started to fall away and um things weren't going too good for me because for any of my brothers and sisters really because my mom and dad ended up divorcing and um then i kind of started hanging around a bad crowd and um none of that was my parents fault but i started hanging around a bad crowd and i started getting into drugs and um, I ended up getting pregnant at the age of 15. So, um, you know, my parents weren't too happy with me being pregnant at that age. So I um, got driven to a clinic and had an unwanted abortion. I did not want that abortion. Again, nobody's fault. Nobody's fault. Um, but I did not want to have that abortion. God knows our hearts and minds. And he knew that I did not want that. But I did it out of fear, and I was only the age of 15. So that led me to do more drugs, led me to more trouble, and um, which was all my choice, all my free will, which is what God gives us. And I um, chose a bad path. And so that bad path spiraled for a very long time. And uh, I, I believed in God, but I was like bitter and mad at everybody. And I was mad at God because I was, I was doing that thing that we all kind of do, you know, where we say, um, God, why me? You know, God, uh, why, why are you allowing my parents to divorce? God, why are you... Um, why did you allow my baby to die? God, why did you do this and do that? You know, why are you doing this to me type of thing that we all kind of do when, um, or at least most of us, I shouldn't say all of us because I don't, I can't speak for all of us, but most of us kind of get mad at God and we shy away from him. And, um, I was doing that for a while. And so... One night, I realized I was, you know, getting into drugs really, really bad. Like, I, I realized I was just into it too bad. And um, so, I, I was living with my grandmother at this time, and I got into a little bit of trouble with the police. I didn't get arrested. I never have been, but, um, and not judging people who have. Cause stuff happens um, but I did get in trouble with the police for for vandalism and so there was more more trouble but as time passed I ended up um, getting my faith back 
and I met somebody and I ended up getting married and we had a kid together and we are very happy um, and we went to church together and everything and I was reading the Bible and everything was very very good um, I had just gotten out of a domestic um, abuse relationship where this um, person was pinching around and grabbing around on my arms and wouldn't let me see my family and stuff like that but I ended up leaving him and getting married um, to somebody and having a child with them and life was good but then this person suffered from addiction um, to alcohol so and it was it wasn't like a functioning alcoholic you know where you can go and um, like just you can go to work and and you can drink a little bit when you go to work or and you can function while you're drunk um, there's some people in the world that can do that but um, this person could not do that they they couldn't withhold their alcohol so um, I couldn't be with that person anymore and I didn't I didn't I didn't want that so I left and I divorced that person but we are still we ended up being good friends and we are still best friends to this day so anyways life goes on and I later in life meet somebody else and uh, this person shames me and puts me down for believing God and makes fun of God all the time around me and um, just tears God down so bad and he also whenever I would say prayers with my children he would make fun of that and say why are you pr saying prayers with your children that's weird that's ridiculous um and you know he would say things like that and then back in the early 2000s cable TV you know there would be infomercials and stuff like that with like churches and um, people who believe in God talking about um, donations and stuff like that and this person I was with at the time would make fun of those commercials and say all those um, people that those uh, stupid people that believe in God all they want is just money and they would that person would just bash those infomercials so anything that had to do with God or any praying that I was doing with my children was put down and eventually it took me all the way from God I turned away from him and I denied him like Paul did and um, I uh, just wasn't living you know a uh, a Christian life I was living a worldly life and eventually I became a Wiccan and I was um, I had a spell book and I was um, you know doing witchcraft and I was seeing some really bad and experiencing some really bad evil things to the point to where I reached out to a Catholic priest and talked with them and talked with other churches about what was going on with me and so um, it it got really bad to a point and so eventually um, I lost my home because I was really not making good choices um, of course obviously doing witchcraft and um, hanging around bad crowds and being with a man that didn't believe in God um, I was making bad choices and I um, ended up uh, not um, doing not like um, doing so good and believing in God and just shying away and whatever and so I ended up like losing I like I was trying to say I was giving this guy that I was with money which I should have never did that I ended up losing my home so I was staying with friends and my children were staying with their dad and I was hopping from place to place and I was homeless and my mom thank God for her God bless her soul asked me to come home and live with her so of course I mean I I did 
because I had nowhere to go. And so, and I wanted to, I felt safe with my mom and I wanted to be there, but it was, I was still very bitter towards my mom too, because, um, you know, the whole, um, divorce and abortion situation. So, um, I wasn't getting along with my mom, even though she was lending out a helping hand, which was looking back so evil of me. Um, and, uh, so I lived with her for a while. And I, my car was breaking down and I was, I lost my job because they thought that I smoked in the establishment, like smoked cigarettes, which I used to smoke years ago, but I quit in 2015 and I have not had a cigarette since then. And, um, I've done no drugs and no cigarettes since 2015. So I've been sober since then. And, um, but this job was accusing me that I brought a pack of cigarettes into a non-smoking facility and was smoking a cigarette, which was not true. So I, my car broke down. I lost my job. I, I was homeless and things were not going good for me. I wasn't able to see my kids a whole lot because there was no space at my mom's house for them to come and visit. So thank God for my, one of my best friends that my, the father of my children, he took care of them so I could get on my feet. So I, um, got on my feet and then, and it, it took me a long time and I got a good job and I worked really hard and I saved money, paid bills off, um, and found one of my best friends who's now passed away. Rest in peace, Ryan Sconiers. Um, he helped me pick out this mobile home that was kind of out in the country from Cedar Rapids, away from Cedar Rapids a little bit. Um, and I found a, a mobile home and then I was at the store buying a couple things for this new mobile home. And I ran into this kid that I used to go to school with, um, and his name's Jason Giza. And he shouted out to me and said, Hey, Ashley, I know that you like to go fishing. And so I smiled and I said, Yeah, I do. He goes, You want to go sometime? And I said, Sure. And he said, Okay, I'll get a hold of you and I, on Facebook or something. And I said, Okay. So I was excited about that. And we ended up talking. And I got out of the other relationship I was in. The relationship I was in with that abusive guy that was making fun of God all the time and uh, I got away from him and then I ended up um, meet, be, meeting and reuniting and being with Jason and um, I'm telling you the guy that was bashing Jesus and God all the time was very mentally abusive and brainwashed me completely and just I allowed him to steal my faith I allowed him to steal my belief in Jesus Christ and I I got I allowed him to abuse me so bad to the point to where I was demolished and I allowed it and so um I I, I let him defeat me and I allowed my faith to be defeated um, and so I, after I allowed him to demolish me and defeat me, um, I, I say allowed because we all have free will and we have a choice and we can choose if we want to, you know, be, stay with somebody and let them do that to us or leave. And sometimes I already know it's easier said than done because we can just, we, we can be in a hard situation that's hard to explain from the outside outside people. So I totally understand that. But it when you get out of it, whatever the situation you're in, it's easier to see what was going on when you're inside. So when, later on, I left this guy. I met the Jason Giza. We ended up getting serious and we ended up getting married. And... um. I 
I I was still a Wiccan at this time, okay? And I, I did witchcraft, and I was doing bad things. I saw bad things, and it wasn't a good experience. But Jason, my husband, kept faith in me and kept telling me, you know, look, you know, because I was depressed from being abused from my past relationships, uh, physically abused and mentally abused. He kept telling me, hang in there, you know, God loves you, Jesus loves you. I'll pray for you. You're not alone. And I was one of those people that was like, no, you know, he doesn't love me. If he loved me, he, my dad wouldn't be dead. If he, if he loved me, you know, um, my parents wouldn't have a divorce. If he loved me, my friends wouldn't have died. If he loved me, I wouldn't have been addicted to drugs. If he loved me and I kept, you know, making these ex dumb excuses up. But Jason kept that faith in me and kept saying he does love you. And God didn't do any of that stuff to you. And he, Jason didn't press anything on me. He just, you know, talked to me about Jesus here and there. Just the little sprinkles of love, you know, that like the little faith and mustard seed that, that we need to to accomplish things and, and, and get through things. That little mustard seed, you know, that's what he did. And so after a while... um. I turned back to Jesus and I ended up praying to him again and praying with my children at night. And I started to read the Bible with Jason. And guess what? As soon as all that happened, as soon as I started turning back to Jesus and knocked off all that witchcraft bullshit, sorry, excuse my language. I should not be <laughs> swearing like that here, but I'm just saying when I knocked all that off, what do you know what happened? I got a good study job. Um, me and Jason's marriage was flourishing. Still, It still is. Eight years strong. Um, we, I ended up, um, you know, being able to keep that mobile home and, and, and uh, renovate it at that. Like, get it all decorated and get it all painted and everything, you know, renew in it. I had a whole new bathroom put in it, me and my husband and everything like that. Like, things were going good. Like, money-wise, love, children. My children were doing good in school. They got to be with their mother again because I wasn't doing drugs and I wasn't homeless and all that anymore. And life was good. And life is good. And every since I got away from those guys and I turned back to Jesus, things have been good. And... Yes, there has been some bad days, but the bad days are harder when you're not with God. They're 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 still hard when you when you believe in God, but they're harder when you don't. And if that doesn't make sense right now, it will later. It'll make sense later if it doesn't now. And so um I I uh kept my faith in God and, and me and my husband wanted to have another baby because he never had any kids before. I had three children, but my husband had none. So he wanted to start a family with me. Well, I had these Esher coils put in my fallopian tubes. Sorry if that's too much information. And he, we wanted to go get them taken out. And it, the, it cost seven grand to do that. So I looked at my husband and I said, what do you want to do? Do you want to use tax money and do you want to go buy a boat for the family so we can go fishing because we love fishing? Or do you want to start a family? And I, that is exactly how we had the conversation. And we looked at each other and he said, I want to start a family. So I said, okay. Well, I did research and research and research on Facebook and, like, just the internet and everything for doctors that remove these Esher coils from your fallopian tubes. I found a doctor. His name's Dr. Montith. Um, if anyone that ends up in this online church needs to have that done, anything with their fallopian tubes, and they want to try to get pregnant and be fruitful... I suggest going to him, Dr. Monteth, a personal choice in North Riley, North Carolina. That's where I went. And something just pointed my, my eyes and the direction to him. 
and I know it was God because I I researched everywhere and nowhere could could um, remove them with the possibility of pregnancy. Everywhere that said they could remove them, only said they could remove them and weren't reassuring that you could get pregnant. So I went to him, and there was a bunch of testimonials of everybody getting pregnant and having babies all over his page, his website. And this man is a believer of God, too. And so that's just another thing right there. And so um, I called this doctor up, you know, I did more research, talked with them, me and Jason did, and we made plans to go there. And so we actually went to Riley, North Carolina, drove all the way up there after a couple months, and I had the procedure done. And I was really scared, and I the all the odds were against us, you guys, because you know we were we we were in our thirties, we still are, but we are in our younger like early thirties, and uh, it was harder to have a baby when you're older like that, you know. And so and you know um, so we had some odds against me because when you have those Esher coils put in. When you get them taken out, you only have a 36% chance of getting pregnant. 36% chance. So I knew that getting the surgery. And my mom and a lot of a lot of other people besides my mom, friends, family were saying, I don't know if you should do this, you know. If you do this, you're probably, you're, you're taking a risk of not having a baby. You know, you're taking a risk of um, wasting your money. You're, you're taking a risk of you might die on the surgery table, all this stuff. I didn't listen. I prayed about it. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I felt God calling me to go try to have this baby, you know, go get pregnant and try to um, see if this worked. So I prayed about it and I laid it in the hands of God. And so... Um, we went there. I got the surgery. The surgery was successful. Only three weeks after the surgery, me and my husband got pregnant. Only three weeks after. Sadly, it ended in a miscarriage. So, um, I went to the doctor for a miscarriage checkup. A miscarriage, a post-miscarriage checkup. Okay? And this, my doctor is listening to my heart, taking my blood pressure, talking to me, and then he feels around on my neck. And when he feels around on my neck, he feels a lump on my throat. And when he feels a lump on my throat, he tells the nurse that she should probably um, get me in for a biopsy. And so he tells me, you know, this could be benign. This happens a lot after pregnancies, but I want to make sure this isn't something else. But I don't want you to be scared, so just, um, you know, try to relax until we get the results from the biopsy, okay? So he d- basically tells me to hang in there. I'm scared. I'm, sc- I'm scared as hell. And um, I was already knowing something was wrong. But I... Went in, got my biopsy, you know, a couple weeks later, and then I had to wait for the results. Talking about leaving things in God's hands. I, I, I was at, there was nothing that was in my control. Nothing. I couldn't control us getting pregnant. I couldn't control whether or not I was going to find out I had cancer or not. Nothing. So... I did what I always knew to do and what I was what I was raised to do to leave it in the hands of God. So I left it in the hands of God and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I ca- I saw signs everywhere. There was a little kid drawing I'll never forget that was folded up and accidentally dropped in the parking lot of Mercy Hospital. And it I opened it up and the little kid wrote faith faith and i still have it i still have that drawing and it, it was a little kid handwriting and it there's it was in crayon 
Um, so I kept that faith and I knew that was a sign to keep faith in God and keep praying and don't give up like you did before on God. So I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I went, I got my results after the biopsy and they were unfortunately, I had cancer. I had papilla, papillary, I think is how you say it. Sorry, I'm trying to eat a glucose tablet. I had papillary thyroid cancer. And the surgeon told Jason that there's not really a stage for thyroid cancer, which I thought they're like, if you got thyroid cancer, you were dead. Cause I didn't, I didn't even know what a thyroid was or what it did until I found out I had thyroid cancer and did research and study. Um, but he told me, me and Jason, after my uh, thyroid was taken out, that if there it was to be stage, it was at stage two and a half. Now, let me tell you guys that if I didn't go to that post-miscarriage checkup, and if me and Jason never even got together, and he never talked to me about God, and never put it in my heart and mind to have another child with him... If Jason didn't do that, if God did not use Jason to do that, to do all that, I may not be here right now today talking to you guys, telling my testimony, and be able to spread the word of Jesus. I am telling you right now, he's real. If you don't believe in him, I'm telling you right now, if you are you have low faith, get it back, because he is real. Um and he can heal, and he can create miracles, he can make them happen. Um, because that right there in itself, the fact that they found um, the cancer from a post-miscarriage is insane, because I'm telling you guys, before this miscarriage happened, I was sick all the time and always going to the ER, and they never found that I had cancer. They always just sent me home. Never could find it. So I really feel that if I didn't get my tubes reversed and didn't plan to have a baby with Jason, I would they wouldn't have found the cancer. Um so going on with my testimony, uh they I was heartbroken because after I found out I had cancer, I couldn't we couldn't start you know I had to try to beat it and I had to get surgery and get my thyroid taken out and I had to get my thyroid levels um, regulated before I could try start trying to conceive again and I you know I had to make sure cancer stayed away I had to beat it so I beat it I beat it with God by my side and I am not kidding you guys when I went into the hospital to get radiation treatment because I had to do radiation. The nurse said, how are you walking right now? Most people that come in here um, to get their radiation have to be wheeled in a wheelchair because they're so weak because their thyroid level is so bad. They're hypothyroid. So they can't even walk. I said, because I'm walking, I'm not walking alone. I'm walking with Jesus. And the lady looked like she was going to cry. But I'll, I'll never forget that. And so I fought cancer. I beat it. They tell me I have to wait for six months to try to conceive a baby. And that was very, 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 very hard for me and Jason considering we just lost a baby. And I, considering, like, yeah, the ultimate worst, me having cancer. So... I waited and waited, and so did Jason, and guess what? As soon as we waited that six months, I was pregnant with little baby Oasis, who is now going to be four years old next month on my birthday because I got to pick what day he was born because I got to, ha I got to pick whether I wanted to have a C-section or not. <clears throat> which, sorry if too much information again. 
uh, I couldn't, they, my surgeon wanted me to have a C-section because of uterine rup- rupture um, could possibility. So I picked a C-section, of course, because I was terrified of that. And that really can happen um, after a tubal reversal. So little Oasis was, I was pregnant with him and I was terrified, you know, the whole time that I was going to lose him. Because, the, like I said, I only had 30%, 36% chance to be pregnant with him. But he kept growing. And he kept growing. And he was healthy. And he was strong. And every ultrasound, he kept getting bigger. And he kept getting stronger. And then, boom. It was ready for me to have a C-section on my birthday, October 28th. So I went in there. And I, you know, they, they got me prepped and ready and I had surgery and I had baby Oasis October 28th, 2020. And we decided to name him Oasis because not only is the band super cool, (laughs) but, um, and they're having a tour by the way, coming up here, but that's not why we named him Oasis because Oasis means in the midst of chaos, um, the wa- there's water in the midst of chaos. There's, there's peace in the midst of chaos. And there's water in the middle of the desert. So, during 2020, you all already know that 2019 and 2020 were pure, pure hell. Especially for Cedar Rapids. It was pure hell everywhere, but especially for Cedar Rapids because we had the pandemic and then we also had the Duray show. And that Duray show took my house down. This is going to be part two of my testimony. But anyways, so I, I'm i going to back up and go back to Oasis. So we named him Oasis for th- that reason because he was our peace in the midst of chaos he was our peace in the middle of COVID-19. He was our peace in the middle of the Duray show and losing our house. So, um, that's what we named him. And he's a strong, very smart, very handsome baby. And he's our miracle baby. Um, so if it, if it, you know, if it wasn't for God using Jason, I would not really, honestly, I probably wouldn't have been saved and I wouldn't believe in God. So I'm very, very, very happy that things happened the way they did and that I met Jason and that I believe in God because I just told you guys just a little glimmer (laughs) of what um, turned me back to Jesus because there's so much more. And I'm going to tell you guys the rest, but just not tonight because it's getting late. Uh, My phone's about ready to die. But I just want to let you guys know that if you're going through a hard time right now, like we all do here and there, don't take your eyes off Jesus and spread the word and and also try to invite people to this to my church online and um talk about god to people don't press it on people don't force it on people just talk about it when you get the opportunity um because um i he's real and he's coming and also he he's you know our our savior and our healer and um i also just wanted to say too that when you're doing that talking about God and spreading his gospel and the Bible and all that. If you start noticing that bad things are happening around you and to you, like they kind of are to me right now, um, that you're doing it right. You're doing it right. Because, um, whenever, like every time I get close with God, every time I ha- I've kind of fall off the wagon and then I got close to God, I, I'm not kidding you. The devil has always attacked me. He's always attacked me. Right now, my phone is broke. 
Um, and what do you know? I work from my phone. He doesn't want me talking. The devil does not want me talking to anybody about Jesus. He doesn't want me to talk about God. Also, um, I've been having financial problems. I think we probably all, all are right now. But, um, and he also wants to try to, um, bring my depression and anxiety, um, not my, I, I don't want to say that. He wants to bring depression and anxiety to the table to me. And you know what? Um, it, it is happening to me and I can't help it. And, um, it's sad and it sucks and I don't want to feel this way, but it's how I'm feeling but I'm not going to take my eyes off Jesus because I've done that before and it's worse without him. So just please take my advice to if things are going bad in your life to don't turn away from him. Don't give up and keep talking about him and keep reading the Bible because things will get better. My dad, he's gone, but he always used to tell me and his whole tribe that's what he used to call us, his seven biological children. He always used to say sometimes when I would ride in the car with him, he'd make little comments like, like, you know, talk to me about life and give me little lectures. And he always would say, um, it's not a bad, it's not a bad, or, or sorry, I'm getting this mixed up. He would say, it's just a bad day, not a bad life. That's what he would say to me. And so I'll never forget that. And I don't want you guys to forget that. And I want you guys to take what my dad told me and take it and take it for yourself. Um, but that's part one of my testimony and what brought me to God. And if you weren't here for the be beginning of the video, just rewind it back and listen to the beginning. But I'm going to get on and I'm going to tell the rest of it some other day. I don't know if it's tomorrow. I don't know when I'll be able to tell the rest because I just don't know how I'm going to be feeling. But I'm going to do it. Um, it's It takes a lot of courage to tell, you know, the story of how you got back to Jesus. And it takes a lot of courage to talk about Jesus in general, especially nowadays with this um, generation and the way um, people are nowadays. Um, you know, I, I, I do have a spiritual side. Um, it's not evil. Um, God is spiritual and Christianity is spiritual. Um, but I do have a spiritual side and I will talk about that in another video. But um, I just want people to know, too, that this this um, church that I'm trying, this congregation and everything that I'm trying to grow, um, I want it to be a safe place of there isn't any judgment here. You can wear, if let's just say, if I have a day where I get on live and I have a church, church um, sermon, sorry, and I um, invite everybody to join in with me on the video. I don't care what you guys wear. I don't care how you look. I don't care what color you are. And I don't care, um, you know, if you have problems. I'm not going to shun you from this congregation. And that's what a real Christian should do. There should be no judgment. Um, but unfortunately... There are a lot of churches nowadays where they um, look at other people and if you're not wearing like your Sunday best or you're not dressed a certain type of way, they will give you dirty looks and they will put judgment upon you, which is not right. And it's really actually weird considering that when you're a Christian or you're a believer of Jesus Christ, you're not supposed to be judging other people. It's God's duty to judge people, not not ours. So, I just wanted to get on here tonight and talk to you guys about that, but I'm going to get off. And I'm, I will be on to 
talk about my testimony more and preach more um, because I, I haven't done a lot of that yet on here, but I'm, I'm going to. But I love all of you guys, and I hope that all of you guys are doing well. And um, don't be afraid to, you know, reach out to me in private if you want to, if you don't want to tell, if you don't want to, you know, talk about what you want prayed for in front of the whole 60-some um, people on here. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Um but, um, pray, keep your faith, um, don't forget what led you to God, and I love you all, and God bless, and have a good night.